Hey athlete, I'm here for you. I've been there. My name is Jure and I felt the same way you feel, sometimes distressed. And now I have a Big The Journey Athlete podcast that hosts amazing guests and we share the wisdom. So let's tune in and enjoy this journey. Hello, we have an amazing guest, Terrell Humphrey. What's, what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? I'm out you. Just yeah, on good. You are still text texting yeah. your mom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Did you set up with her the meeting? Yes, I did. Yes, cool. I did. Cool. So thanks for being with us. You come from Rock something? Little Rock, Arkansas. Yes, sir. Arkansas. I love it. Arkansas. <laughs> Please present yourself a bit. Okay, we'll do. Uh, my name is Terrell with the Wild Humphrey, and uh, I am a public speaker that that uh, speaks about um, faith, confidence, and persistence. Um, I, I'm somebody that's, that's aspiring to educate the masses to have belief, to have belief amongst themselves, their dreams, and to try, just to try. Once we try, we are able to figure out things as we go, as we go along the journey. I love it. Great. We met on a 10x uh, society community. That's why we're gonna 10x assets all around. So mm -hmm. please tell me what made you you. What have you gone through in life? So to uh, to to the beginning, my mama. I was raised by a single parent. Uh, my mama. She raised three boys by herself. When she raised three boys by herself. It, it was a lot that goes and that get, goes on behind that that we as kids really don't understand. So as we're growing up, we I start to learn about the small details that my mama didn't even talk about that was subconsciously there. She has eight degrees, and if anybody has any type of schooling or any type of education, eight degrees is a lot of school. So not only was she persistent, not only was she de dedicated, she had a, a a burning desire to create something for us. So me learning from that, me seeing that really inspired me to become the person I am. But my, like I said, my mama raised three boys by herself. She did a phenomenal job. However, raising a man, that's impossible because she's a woman. So my divorce made me become more in tune with who I am simply because I had to find that. I was coerced into that. Pain creates purpose and my divorce created that pain. So essentially me going through a divorce taught me how to be a man, how to learn more about myself, how to be in tune with my emotions. So everything that I'm doing, I learned from my mama and I learned from life as well. So it's kind of like an intertwined factor of learning and experience and, and combining them all together, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course it makes sense. And you're mentioning some important triggers, trauma situations regarding living just with a lady, a mom, not the male, male side, masculinity, and how you went into, of course, a marriage and then going out because you felt that missing point about yourself, the masculinity. So I love how you can recognize that and connect the points because a lot of people are still like zombies, you know, they, 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 are, they don't open the eyes and you're opening the eyes. Uh, please tell me a bit uh, wh what have you been working on with uh, where you were in the past and where you're going now. So the past four years I was in the military. Uh, I was in the United States Marine Corps and I got out October 28th. When I joined back in October 2018, 2018, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know my identity. I didn't know who I was. I just I was just trying to join the military join the service in order to create some type of work experience some type of working i didn't even know what to call it back then i just know i wanted different for myself so when i joined the military this was a a, 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 a eye opener to identify who i was the military is very structured it's very organized to the point to where we have to do things when we told at the time that we were told to do it nothing wrong with that at all the discipline was already instilled from my mama However, when you go to a different environment, now you have to adapt to everybody that's there. There's different people from all walks of life, from all parts of the country that's here in one bay. So me learning that, I had to learn myself. But I didn't start learning myself in 2019, well, 2018 and 2019. I started learning about myself in August of 2020. And when I started learning about myself, I was married at the time. I was happily married. 
But I, I, I felt the norm was living paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. There's, we, had, we wasn't exposed to living comfortably. Like what is comfortably? Being from Little Rock, Arkansas, being raised by a single mom, we don't get we don't get explained that. So when the world was on, on on my shoulders, I felt the world on my shoulders. Not only could I not provide for my wife, I felt like I couldn't provide for myself. Then it just hit me: the military is to make us comfortable, nothing else, nothing more. So how do you prevail and actually excel from this? I don't know. It was a song called "Cool" by Anthony Hamilton that played. When it played, it really hit me, really hit me emotionally in my heart because that's the first time I stopped. That's the first time I recognized why I was crying. I was able to cry. I was able to take the world off my shoulders when I was eight, when I when I done that. If I felt a big relief and a big weight off of me, so I didn't find that there's a process that that goes into growth and and, and learning and the phase and, and your journey. Now it's like okay. Everything that I've been through, why do, why did I go through it? Because I had to do that. I had to learn. I had to grow. I had to excel. Because today, where I'm going, I'm I'm a public speaker. The message that I have is still still faith, confidence, while I've been persistent along the journey. I got that from seeing my mama, from learning about myself, and just little parts of details of life that actually come together as one. But how do we learn that if we don't put time and effort to accept what's wrong with us? So now today I'm able to, like you said, I was able to identify my, my emotions. As a man, we don't speak about identifying your emotions. Why not? Because it's not cool. It's not. It's not really the norm. The norm normality. But how do you do something if you've never done it before? You do it. You try it. You understand it. It is okay to be in tune with your emotions as a man, because you have to grow. Women have emotions, but women don't get talked about. Like men get talked about, if that makes sense. So why is it we can't be in tune with us as one and actually start growing, growing? Because once we, once I was able to do that, my purpose became more defined, my emotions became aware, and now I'm constantly growing day by day, night by night, month by month. And it's hard, but it's doable. Yeah. Anything that's doable is worth learning. Great. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your thoughts, coming out with this uh, fragile self that can actually begin to build itself in a new way. And uh, yeah, prior you mentioned uh, your mom and then your marriage and the military, uh, so Marines and everything, how it's all connected and how you open the eyes. Because actually also a lot of athletes, and I count every person as an athlete. We are all training something. It doesn't matter if it's sport, chess, politics, business, you're an athlete. You need to be fit mentally, physically, emotionally. So all of these traumas, and especially from a single mom uh, family, I heard there's a percentage that children from single moms, they are 50 or 60 or 90% even more in drugs, more in some fatalities, accidents, lost, confused, because this missing part of the testosterone of these emotions is missing. And what it builds up also in the families where there is, is a man, is a dad, it builds up this hate, this powerlessness, and then you build up this hate and then rage. So a lot of, I figured that you met a lot of Marines that had the same emotions. And love it when you mention how men are not supposed to feel. Hell, yes, we feel all the time. I love it when a lady says to me, oh, I have cramps, I have period. You don't understand this. And I'm like, no, I don't have balls. I've never fallen down on my balls, literally, excuse me for the language, but you know, when you ride a bike, somebody kicks you, you get a football inside your groin. We feel as well, physically, mentally, emotionally, we feel. Please expand on your why. Why are you so invested, um, interested in bringing forward this feeling, this notion of being a man and achieving, activating all of the potential. Pain, pushing away, hurt, pushing away everything that we're suppressing for so long, why can't we just bring it to light? 
the the day that we bring it to light is the second we start growing. But it's hard to do something if you never had a chance to do it. It's hard to do something if you wasn't taught this. My mom was a great mom, phenomenal mom, but she raised three boys to suppress our feelings. We we don't talk about how 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 that is detrimental to men as we're growing up. I can't speak about women because I'm not a woman. However, I, I am a man. We don't speak about that. What's being suppressed for so long is going, is building up. It's building up. It's building up. It's building up. We don't understand where it came from. And I had, one day I asked my wife, I asked her, because you know women are very in, very emotionally attacked, attached to their emotions. So they can, they can identify. They can verbally say it. They can say it. They can sit and they can express it. So I asked her one day, how come you, if you know how to work with your emotions, how come you didn't teach me? How come you can't teach me? She made a statement that really blew my mind. She said, I can't teach you that. I'm like, what? I'm like, why not? You my wife, ain't you? You know how to do something I don't know how to do. Or why can't you do that? It's deeper than that. Simply because if I've never had to learn how to work my emotions, somebody else can't teach me how to do something if, I, if, I, if I'm not, if I, if I wasn't taught it. So I had to go through pain. I had to go through pain. That, that hard time when me and my wife were separating, I had to go through that and find out who I was, who I was, who I was becoming. And to answer your question, we have to make that a normality. Like we get hurt, your feelings get hurt. It is okay for your feelings to get hurt, but you have to identify what just hurt your feelings. It's okay to feel happy. What just made you feel happy? But a lot of times we we uh, we pay attention to the happy, to the good, rather than the bad. The bad we just toss it away, keep tossing away. But you can only talk so much until it keep compounding. But as it's compounding, it's destroying us internally. So the reason why I'm doing everything is to show that once you start working on yourself, once you start learning about yourself, once you start really accepting everything, not just a, a small portion, everything that has happened to you, you're able to, to create a new version of yourself. You're able to walk in your purpose. My purpose is to educate the masses to believe in themselves. It is difficult. It is difficult. It is difficult to believe in yourself, especially when we don't see what's on the other side of the journey. Yes. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it also goes like, like this. We don't want to change. We don't want to grow or come out of this cocoon bubble, certain way of being because um, we are so used to, to what we know. We have issues being what we know. We have separation, we have uh, money problems, we have emotional problems, hormonal problems. We just don't wanna go out of it. It's like, because nothing else exists. It's not out of this balloon. I don't know how to go out of the, this balloon, like you said, but the goal is to realign, like you mentioned, and understand, I need to stop. I loved when you mentioned this. I stopped, I cried. Stopping, it's like, I, I always use this uh, metaphor. You're on a hamster wheel and you're always running, chasing that carrot. When you stop, turn around, the carrot hits you. So you get what you need. But stopping, how can I just stop? If I stop, I will lose more money. If I stop, I will be more injured. If I stop, I will more separate with something, someone. No, you won't. This, what you're doing is making you lose. Stop and change what you're doing. But, oh my God, it's so difficult. Because of pain, I love when you mention it, is really embedded, imprinted in our muscles, our fascia, our whole being, whole body. And we live just here. We think that pain is produced here, emotions produced here. No, this is just a processor. We just translate with this. The whole body is the whole vessel, the whole idea. And once you get in tune with that, you begin to grow, you begin to transform into being a genuine athlete like you are, that you begin to glow and raise above and get your why out of all that suffering, pain, hitting the wall, and then realizing it hurts because I'm the one hitting. Just stop hitting. And then you're like, oh, if I don't hit, I will not experience pain or something different. Oh, that should be interesting. What if I try? 
So how did you try and how are you now developing your billionaire mindset? In what way? Why is this billion so important for you? A great question. That is a phenomenal question, man. Thank you for that question. Um, so when I was going through the pain, I started making content. The way I was able to cope with my pain was to hide it, was to not necessarily hide it, but really express it in a way that I knew how to. I, was, I started making content in August 2020. However, I got serious when the heartbreak started happening earlier this year. But as I'm making content, I'm not really seeing what's happening until people in the comments start saying, I was feeling the same way. Like, man, I was just feeling like that. Like, man, I was just thinking like that. Like, man, I just went through that. So I'm like, hold on. There's something here. What is here? So I keep posting. I keep seeing the numbers going up. So we go from my, my average average um, view watch was maybe 20 to 100. Well, as I was making the videos conse consecutively, it went from 100 to like maybe 10K, 15K. So I'm like, okay, what is here? What is here? So I'm like, hold on. I got the thinking. I got the looking. I got the researching i said oh i'm not the only one going through things i am not the only one going through things but i am the one that can verbally say this is what's wrong with me mind-boggling so i started really studying i started going to masterminds different networking events different uh places where there's a lot of people the the main the event that really inspired the billionaire uh mindset was it was september 26th and for, it was September 26, 2022, at 8 o'clock in the morning. For some reason, I had a dream and say, I'm going to be a billionaire. A billionaire, okay? A dream. September 28, 2022, Grant Cardone had a mastermind. It was ironic, right? So I, I filled out the Twitter ad and I went. Mind you, I did not know what's, who was going to be in this room, who or what was going to be in this room. So when I went, a guy asked me, his, guy, his name was uh, Anthony Glenn. He asked me, how did you get an invite? I said, I didn't. I just filled out an ad and came. I said, how you get an invite? He said, Grant Cardone uh, invited me. I said, oh, okay, must be nice. But then it really dialed in. I'm like, hold on. Everybody that's in here then got an invitation from Grant besides me. Okay, so Grant Cardone come in. And he made a statement. He was like, this room is 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 worth $1.2 billion. It's not counting mines. I'm like, hold on, okay. So as he's talking, as he's walking, as he's interacting with everybody, I had this question that come to my mind. And when it came to my mind, I didn't know how to present it. So I'm getting up. I've never seen a billionaire. I've never seen a billionaire in my life. So when I got up and when I got up and, and asked the question, this wasn't a question. For someone that's aspiring to become a billionaire, what advice would you give? He said, don't stop in a million. I said, no, 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 no. Not a not, not a millionaire, a billionaire. He said, I know, I heard you. So mind you, it's Grant Cardone, a billionaire right in front of me that just gave me the advice to not to stop at a millionaire. So when I go for the billion, so ever since then, my thoughts has been out the roof instead of at the roof. There's no limitations. I have a shirt that says, it's crazy that you said that, billionaire in the making. <laughs> I, I, I saw um, a, video, a podcast with Grant Cardone. He had a box and he had the same thing, billionaire in the making. He had his initials at the bottom. I saw that. I said, this man, Grant Cardone, really believe in himself. So to answer your question, the billionaire idea, the billionaire thoughts, and the billionaire uh, mindset came from belief and being exposed to what belief looks like. Cool. Belief, and I love it, the doing, being, in the going, uh, a lot of crazy Crazy people have done amazing things. We use cell phone that was created by a crazy person in a way, and that's just one example. We have people that heal with eyes. We had people that heal with heart. We had people that invent amazing stuff. They download that from some collective higher consciousness library. So 
what's wrong or why not go for that aspire for that and just live it and and go through it uh, have this pain everything that you went through as um in Dominican Republic they say abono like shit you know that you put in the ground that everything grows out so why not use it and just put in the seed put in the seed put in the seed we have a lot of shit we have a lot of traumas all around if not your own so just put in the seeds put in the seeds and start living this outside like you are living and you are pronouncing it and whatever comes up whatever's the still limitation still some inside limitation restriction belief it will go away eventually the important thing is that you keep pronouncing it keep being it and then you'll you'll live it you'll reach it and then you'll say oh oh now i believe even more so it's not about belief yes now here go up or uh, down just go with that uh, i like that and continue please on this transformation journey that you're on how do you intend to now invite and all the audience that you gathered and uh, inspired already that are following you how to keep this transformation billionaire momentum going so how i keep it going is just really being consistent with it um it, it it's once you build a routine with you amongst yourself you're able to keep it and maintain it see when we get comfortable we're able to deviate from the routine that we just created for ourselves so the military is a structural structural organization that you know it's time time restraint so wherever time is time that very time oriented i'm sorry wherever time you're supposed to be somewhere just this time you're supposed to be wherever time you get off this time you get off if you're supposed to be at lunch at this time you're supposed to be at lunch at that time you just understand that everything that, you know, that i have built up to this moment can be expanded if i don't stop if i don't get comfortable if i don't get complacent now mind you it is it's overwhelming i'm not gonna sit here and say it's easy it is not easy it is definitely overwhelming and it's definitely a place to where like you kind of feel like you're on an island by yourself and an island by yourself is meaning like sometimes a lot of people don't understand what you're growing through meaning that you can't go nobody speak with what you're dealing with it might sound kind of you know kind of weird to say however i'm able to hear and solve everybody's problems but the problems i have there's very minuscule people that i can go to no problem at all but that island is very small it's lonely i was watching this podcast the other day or yesterday it was with uh the pivot shannon tano uh wallo uh, i can't remember the, the rest of the host but wallo made a statement he was like man being being at the top is lonely he said being at the top is lonely bro and I felt that because I understand, I, I really understand why being at the top is lonely because everybody can't come with you. You can't, everybody that you want to come, maybe not, they're not ready. Maybe they don't have the same belief that you have. Maybe, you know, it's not their timing. Whatever the reason is, something is preventing them from growing with you. So now you just hear it by yourself un until you meet people that's able to understand what you're going through. But you know, that that just being consistent and understanding that that the end the end of the tunnel is not gonna come unless I create the end. There's no ending. <laughs> there's no ending. That there's there's infinite goals that we can accomplish if we just keep going. So now I'm able to teach and inspire people what I've learned through social media, through finding yourself to see what your what is your problem. When I when I'm about to give advice, I don't give advice first. I ask. What do you think the problem is? They tell me. Once they tell me, how do you think you can solve that? They tell me the solution. A lot of times the best teacher is the one that asks the right questions. If you're able to come up with the answer, your own answer, you just answer your own question. Now, mind you, the questions that we're asking, it's, it's meant for you to think. You're not gonna have the answers all the time. However, if you keep prevailing through life, if you're going through experience, the right person will be able to guide you along the path, guide you along the answer. Maybe there's the question that you didn't understand. Next month, you'll be understanding like, oh, that's, that's what he meant. This is, what, this is why he asked that. See, there's a reason behind the journey, but we have to identify what that journey is when we find ourselves. Yes, that's it, Tyrell. It's the structure 
like you mentioned, uh, the order, the way things go and how you can just expand, expand. And if we are philosophical or even not, is there a tunnel? There even isn't a tunnel in a way when you mind open so much and expand so much. It's like, I need to find the light. Light is here or darkness is here or whatever. I'm just going, I'm just flowing. Just don't stop like Grant's saying with the 10X and everything, inspiration and, and movement uh, that you don't stop. So the structure, and I have a joke. Maybe it's not as, let's, let's try it. Uh, because it's what you mentioned, an island. So there's a cruise ship, you know, it uh, has the wreck or something. It goes down the ocean, only two people survive, one man, one lady. They find themselves on the island, small island. They're the only ones there. They get some clothes and packages from the wreck, wreckage or something. So they, you know, after a while of doing their shelter, they, after a couple of days or weeks, they begin to make love. You know, of course, they're, what else to do in a way on an island, paradise. So then they do this love intimacy for a couple of weeks. And then the guy says, please, this is a famous lady, even if it's Sofia Vergara or Jennifer Aniston, whoever, uh, so that people can imagine. This guy says, he's not famous, you know, please, can you please put yourself like some, uh, this mustache, beard, and dress yourself like a man and just walk on the beach? And she's like, why? Just please do it for me. So she does it and he goes and run and says, hey, Frank, I'm having sex with Jennifer Aniston. So, because you want to share, you know, <laughs> you want to you want to be at the top, but you want to share. You want to be surrounded with people who get you, who understand you, that you share your winnings and everything, how you go through. So, OK, to somehow wrap it up, do you have an idea? Do you have a solution? What is the solution for what problem is the solution for? with me personally or yes my you your billionaire mindset how you are bringing this uh emotional lost state confusion of man into life how you are bringing which solution what is this if you can put it like in a wrap moment that they people get the light at the end the tunnel so my solution is go through the pain you know mind you okay when you're going through the pain there's days, there's moments, there's hours that you have to really dwell in. When I went through my pain, I wanted to be so over because it hurt it so much. It was discouraging and it, it was disheartening. But as I was able to identify the pain, I just sat in it and I understood what I was going through. I understood what I was feeling, why I'm feeling this way. My heart was broken. I really love this young lady, but we can no longer can be together. My heart was broken. It's a scenario, you, have you ever, so say you got a, a bat, right? And it's glass, like uh, big massive glass. I can't think of the, of the uh, how big it is. You take the bat and you smash it. Now, instead of a whole piece of glass, you got small pieces, right? But as you're picking up these pieces, this is a new identity that you have found amongst yourself, right? So as you're re replacing it, it doesn't look as good as the first one. But when you put the puzzles together, it's together. But you're a new person, new version, a, a person that has grown. When you're able to sit in what has happened, you're able to identify you as a person. And once you identify you as a person, you start to grow. Once you start to grow, you start to find your purpose. So the solution is sit in the pain rather than trying to overcome the pain so quickly. I got another example. Um, a couple months ago, I was sick. I felt myself getting sick. It was Monday. I felt myself getting sick. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and take some medicine. I'm going to drink some vitamin C, take all the medicine I need to so I can be healthy. Them orange juice, what pretty, pretty, pretty um, small, but they had 46 grams of sugar and I drank four of them. I felt horrible. Tuesday through Friday, I felt horrible. But what did I learn? sit in the sickness, sit in the pain. We can't be healthy overnight. If we're feeling our body is, is going in a, in a way that it's going, walk it. Instead of trying to run it, you know, walk with it, sit in it and understand that the solution will come in due, in due time. 
rather than tomorrow? Absolutely not. So just sit in your pain, sit in your misery, sit and dwell and learn from this. If you need to jot down your notes on how you're feeling and expressing yourself, hey, do that. I have a notebook when I was feeling sad that I, I read one paragraph like a couple months later, I've never picked that notebook back up because it just drained my energy and I felt every emotion that I was writing. I said, I can't read this anymore. Journal, journal as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrell. You did a good job. You're doing a good job. Continue. Go pick up your mom now. Help her. And let's ignite this billion people. Let's get to these billion people that will hear the story, heal the potential, activate themselves, and begin to feel. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for tuning in and enjoying this amazing podcast of Being the Journey Athlete. You can follow me on YouTube and any other social media and podcast platform where I host different guests once or two times per month. Join in and let's roll.